Hey, it's uh, John Reed, uh, Hack for Western Mass. We've got Anna Maria and we've got Carrie. How's it going? Okay. Pretty well. So, uh, Carrie, start with you. Tell me, why, why'd you come and what were you hoping to get out of this? Well, I'm actually an organizer. Okay. So I helped make the event happen with a really fabulous yeah. team of people. And um, I was really excited about a hackathon because I'd never been part of one before. And I, I work with data. I work with... Um, computers and I'm essentially a technologist and um, in my daily life I like to see it used for the public good and it's a lot of fun to come in a more informal setting and make cool new stuff. <laughs> so when you came into the weekend did you did you basically pick a team or were you more floating or did you throw yourself into one project? Uh, I floated at first but then okay. I joined the community action mapping okay. team. Which is where you come in I suppose? Yeah. So, so what inspired you to come out here? Actually, I work with the Census Bureau, so okay. data is something that we're very, You're fairly very familiar, familiar with. with. Yes. And when you match data with uh, community needs, it's like the ideal situation. So I knew that Community Action was going to be here, and I wanted to hear some other presentations and see where census data could help move that project along. And I ended up with the Community Action Agency, okay. or Community Agency Mapping Project. Okay. And, and how can census data help? Well, what they're going to actually be looking at, which I think is pretty, pretty neat, is looking at their service area and whom they serve. And then if you use census data and plot it out in the same area, are they reaching everyone who needs the services, or is there a gap? Mm -hmm. And if there's a gap, then they, there's some planning decisions mm -hmm. and some policy decisions mm -hmm. that inform. So tell me about how you guys prioritize what you're going to work on this weekend. Was it difficult? Because I'm sure you had lots of <laughs> ideas flying around. We're now about a day and a half in, and you're under a little bit of time pressure to finish yes. up. But how did you go through that process? Well, it's a good question. <laughs> At first, when we all met up, we didn't know each other. We didn't know each yeah. other's skills. And we, we had a sense of the challenge. The challenges were pretty well articulated. But we, we had the opportunity to also work with two people from Community Action right. to clarify exactly what they wanted to get out of the project. Okay. That helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and there actually were some ground rules that we really established and sort of bought into early on, and that was to foster team, and so that, you know, getting to know each other, getting to know what our skills are, um, and then recognizing that each of us brings a different skill that's needed for the end product, mm. that not one individual alone could do it. So I think it was this whole team notion that really, mm -hmm. for me, has been ex extremely exciting. And, you know, I speak a second language. I speak Spanish. I now know another language, the Which language of programmers. And I mean, they had words that I didn't even know existed. You figured out how to talk to some code geeks, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? And that their willingness to translate you know, for a novice who doesn't know anything. Right. You know, all I know is click on that button and then they make it happen. You know, this is this whole cutting edge thing in developer circles now, which is these ideas, they call it agile, or sometimes it's design thinking, but it has to do with putting everyone who cares about a project in the same room, mm -hmm. as opposed to going out and programming something where you're not in touch with people, and then months go by and you show them something and they don't even like it because it's not connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you guys cut through all that kind of crud this weekend and pretty much said, here's what we need and get it done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we formed a data team and, and a development team, essentially, an interface okay. team. Yeah. So we had a front end and a back end. And there were some folks who floated between. Floated between. And okay. we were facing each other. So whenever a conversation started to get really loud and excited, everybody could really hear what was going right. on. And, and people would pipe in and say, well, maybe we should be working on that. Or, so we passed tasks back and forth that way. Yeah. So you can't possibly finish all this this weekend, right? I mean, come on. Say you have an hour left. Oh, a... ye of little faith. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, what, what are you hoping to leave this weekend with? So, We're going to have a prototype. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a prototype, something that they continue to be developed. And maybe, you know, I mean, I, I love to think globally. You know, uh, uh, a model that can be used through, for social services organizations anywhere. Sure, sure. So if you could look ahead like, um, say, six months, a year from now, where, where would you like this to evolve? I, I assume you, wanna, you don't want to just look back on a good weekend. You want to be able to point to this. Where do you want it to go? 
I mean, I think Anna Maria said it's great that that this is a potential model mm -hmm. for um, for a lot of social service agencies to be able to communicate to their funders and communicate mm -hmm. also to the general public what they do, mm -hmm. as well as communicate what they offer, where they offer it. So the map that we're working on overlays transportation, and it, it could overlay other um, kinds of services, and it yeah. allows people to really find their way, um, as well as see the difference between what's being delivered and all of the great needs that there are out there. The other thing that sounded really interesting was this notion that there could be a lot of publicly available data that's not even being utilized, and the sort of combination of people that understand data and, and can code seems like really bring these people together more often maybe, huh? Yeah, yeah I, I think I think it's a great idea. Yeah. The other thing that just came to mind also is that people then get, get to make and form opinions right. based on data gotcha. and not on gut reaction. Sure. They might come up with the same opinion. Right. That's okay. <laughs> sure, but, but you can yeah. check it out. Yeah, you get can check it out. Fair enough. All right, well, we're going to get you in trouble if we don't get you back to your yes. team, yes. so <laughs> we'll head you out. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.